Hello, I am John Bell, Application Engineer at Circuit Design Japan. In today's video, we are going to introduce the Wave Propagation Calculation tool. The goal of this tool is to teach those who use radio modules, like the ones at Circuit Design, on how various factors such as transmission power, receiver sensitivity and antenna height can affect their communication range. I will take you through obtaining and understanding the values from the tool so you can maximize your communication range and get the best possible results. Before we can discuss communication range, we must understand how electromagnetic waves, such as radio waves, move through space. If you would like to use the wave propagation calculation tool now, please skip to the next chapter using the calculation tool. Our calculation tool can simulate two scenarios, free space and two wave model. We can define free space as a close approximation to outer space meaning the absence of any surface or objects that could interfere with the waves. To simulate this, we can imagine a transmitter and receiver in such space. Since communication in free space does not occur realistically, the next step is to imagine taking the free space and adding a large ground plane into it. We will assume the ground plane reflects all radio waves that hit it. Note that the receiver will also see a wave arriving on the second path, let's call this B in addition to the wave on the direct path, which we can call A. This is because the ground plane reflects the radio waves towards the receiving antenna, giving the radio waves a second path of arrival. So what happens when the waves A and B arrive at the receiver? We can look at the phase relationship between them. There will be distances from the transmitter where the two waves are in phase to interact and create a stronger wave, and places where they are out of phase to create a weaker one. By comparing the electric field strengths between the free space and two wave models, we will see the influence due to the reflected wave. I will now show how to use the calculation tool. For ease of comparison, we will run the simulation using the STD302Z434 MHz and SD502 2.4 GHz radio modules as an example. So, let's start with free space and input the parameters. For analysis, let us draw the stations, transmit and receive antennas symbolically like this. When using the SD302Z434 MHz, we can input a channel, for example 434.200 MHz. The SD302Z RF output power is 10 mW. Note that the tool requires you to input the value as dBm. However, as 10 mW is the same numerically, we can just enter 10 here. Whatever dBm value is entered will be automatically displayed in milliwatts here. If you want to see the result at, let's say, 1 km, enter it here. Moving to the advanced input parameters, we are looking at free space so we can ignore the antenna heights. For now we can assume the use of a monopole antenna for both transmitter and receiver and input the gain of 2.14 here. Then make sure we have free space selected. Scroll down just below and you can see the results of the simulation. By checking here, we can switch between the linear and log graph display. Also note how the level decreases with the distance from the transmitter, according to the explanation earlier. Now we can place the mouse anywhere on these lines to get the received level. One line shows electric field strength in dB microvolts per meter at the receiver. The other line shows the received power level in dBm at the receiver. Next we can look at the two-wave model. We can use the parameters we just entered, except now we have to enter the antenna heights here as there is a ground plane present. The values for antenna height and gain are entered here. For example, a transmitter antenna height of 5 meters, we just enter 5. We can also enter a receiver antenna height separately, for example 6 meters. However, we will use the default values of 2 meters for both. We also need to select the two-wave model here. Scroll to the results of the simulation and compare to the previous graph for free space. Initially they both seem similar. However, due to the inclusion of the ground plane, we can see its impact. If we look at the distances close to the transmitter at around 10 meters, we notice dips in signal level. If you want to maximize communication, you will need to avoid operating in these dips. Input the new frequency. We choose a channel in the 2.4 GHz channel plan used in the STD502. Let's look at the results and compare it to the 434 MHz result. 
you can see the number of signal dips is more frequent and loss is greater in the vicinity of the transmitter. Imagine that we are looking at the specifications of a module. Let's say for example SD302Z. If we look at the sensitivity values, we come across terms such as minus 116 dBm at 1% bit error rate. So having established our acceptable conditions for reception, we can draw our minimum threshold on the graph. We can see from our simulation that this would give us a usable range of about 3.5 km. However, the relationship between the sensitivity value and the distance should only be a guide when using the SD02Z module. Because in reality no radio link can be totally error free, and therefore the criteria for successful communication will vary from customer and type of transmissions. Interference from the environment will cause the signal to fluctuate, so it is recommended to insert a margin to ensure stable and reliable communication. For more reading about communication margins, see the article link budgets in the RF design guide. When inserting our margin, we allow 10 dB to cover any signal variation due to noise, plus alpha for reliable data communication. For example, if alpha is 10 dB, then we will need to insert a total margin of 20 dB in our simulation. The margin means operating at a slightly less distance than initially predicted, and alpha will be whatever the customer decides is necessary for reliable communication. If necessary, increasing the height of the antennas will increase the levels and move the lines up, giving us greater range. So this concludes the video regarding the use of the wave propagation tool. Since every environment is unique, it is impossible for a calculation tool to predict the exact range. We hope that you have enjoyed this video. The link for the two-wave calculation tool is here, which also contains the link to the video. You can explore our other calculation tools on our calculation tool page.